I'd like you to take a moment to think about the meal that you ate most recently. What was it that determined how much food you ate? Was it how hungry you were? Was it how nice the food tasted? What if I told you that the number of people you were eating with was a stronger influence on the amount you ate than either of those? Although we often think that our hunger and what the food tastes like are the key determinants of how much we eat, researchers have found that social factors, like who we're eating with, can have an even more powerful influence on our food intake. One particular type of social influence is something called the social facilitation effect. Social facilitation refers to the tendency for people to eat larger amounts of food when they're dining in groups compared to when they're dining alone. And this isn't some small effect. Studies have found that people eat up to 48% more food when they're dining with others than by themselves. Now, this begs the question, where is this extra food coming from? Is extra food obtained throughout the meal? Or do people plan to eat more during social meals and therefore provide extra food before the meal? To investigate this question, I invited people into the lab for a free meal of pasta. I found that not only did people eat more pasta when they were dining with others than when dining alone, but even before the meal began, people served themselves more food when they knew that they were going to be having a meal in a social situation. The next questions then become, why do people make more food available for social meals than for non-social ones? And are they doing this deliberately? As a first step towards answering these questions, I wanted to know whether people were even aware of social facilitation. I asked people to imagine dining alone and dining with other people and asked them how much pasta they would serve themselves in each of those imagined scenarios. What did I find? The exact opposite effect to what we see in the lab. People said that they'd eat smaller portions when they're with others than when they're by themselves. It seems then that people are not aware of the social facilitation effect and there's a discrepancy between people's intentions and their actual eating behaviour. So why do we care about any of this? Well, it can be difficult to navigate our food environments at the best of times, but controlling our intake becomes even harder when we don't know what's influencing our behaviour. Although in the media we often hear about obesity and people trying to lose weight, these are certainly not the only situations in which we might want to think about what influences our food intake. Just as important to think about are situations in which underconsumption and malnutrition are issues, for example, with some elderly populations. So clearly there's a range of situations in which it would be helpful to know what is influencing our behavior and why. By better understanding our food intake, we'll be better equipped to improve both our health and that of society.